this time, I'm going to do the path of light on dry paper. And this is a lot scarier. With the wet, everything softens out and blends. But on dry paper, you're going to have hard edges, and a lot of people get pretty nervous about it. When I was in the Czech Republic, two weeks with a group, painting on location, we had no sun the entire two weeks. It was unbelievable. Day after day, we waited for the sun to come out, and it didn't come out. So I was so happy I had this path of light to work with, and, and we just got carried away with it. It was so much fun. Now I'd rather do a path of light than a traditional painting. <laughs> so sometimes that old expression is true. Necessity is the mother of invention. So I'll be forever grateful that we didn't have any sun because I really enjoyed this idea of just creating the path of light. So once again, I'm just going to pick some colors. In this case, I'm going to do some quinacridone gold. I love this color. And I'm just going to come in and on dry paper now. This is scary. So after you've done a few strokes, see how you can get this, what's called dry brush. Now, I have to remember to keep a path of light going through this. And I'm, notice how I'm painting right through the subject. This is painting outside the lines. Now this makes people nervous. You know, we all grew up with coloring books and if we stayed in the lines, our moms give us little treats, our teachers gave us little treats. But right now I'm talking about don't go in the lines, go outside the lines. Now this is foliage down here, so I think I'll just throw a little paint in there to create what the almost a foliage-like look. But keep that light on your subject. So anywhere is game. Anywhere you want to go. This is really, this is really fun. Okay, now I'm going to go into some quinacridone burnt orange. One of my favorite colors. And I'm going to go into the gold. Now I will get some soft edges when I do that. That's exciting. And again, once again, we're getting that dry brush look. That's really important. See where it just sort of drags along and creates some interesting dry looking shapes. We like that. We can put a little color through our subject. Also very important to touch the edges of the paper. So we've touched up here, we've touched over here. Let's do a little more of this. I'll put a little water in with it. So again, I'm just going to create some of that look of the foliage just by putting a little extra water in my brush. Harmonically bumping into that yellow. Over here, I'm going to pull a little bit of this color through. Come down. Can you see the white path developing? Linking from the edge, through the subject, through the center of the subject, all the way to the top. Now I'm going to get really brave and add a little quinacridone coral. This is exciting. So I'm going to come in here, pull some of this coral down. Harmonically add it into some of the gold and uh, quinacridone burnt orange. Pull some of it down. Yeah. Let's go into the subject here a little bit. Again, we're starting to run out of paint. So now I'm going to start seeing those dry brush shapes. We love those dry brush shapes. Linking with the edge, maybe throwing again a little more water into the foliage. Now I'm going to add my last color, which is the cobalt blue. And cobalt is such a perfect color to add because what it does is it grays it down. 
So if I come in here, especially along the edge, and put this in, you can see it's going to create some grayness. And that's good. Put a little bit in the subject itself. But mostly I like to link this gray color to the edge of the paper. And I'm going to add a little bit of this color into the foliage again. Create some of that texture. So again, we've kept our path of light. It's coming up from two areas, connecting, going out. So now when this dries, we'll come back and pull it together. Yeah.